Welcome in to Let's Talk Shop. My name is Steve. I need to vent. Mazda RX-3 vents. These are the two that came off of Hazel, the silver car. Yeah, there's a little issue going on. They're both kind of broken where the pull housing meets with the cable sheath. Fractured. Now the vent itself is okay. Um, I've checked the levers and everything works inside of there. So if I'm able to find cables for those, those are okay. So the rubber gaskets that seal against the firewall also are complemented with a foamy gasket. Now, I was not successful at salvaging those upon disassembly, so got to make new ones of those. Uh, the ones coming off the green car, you know, I got the spare parts car, thinking, ah, no problem, I'll just get them off the other car. Well, you know, one of those is busted, too, right here where the, where the pull housing meets with the cable sheath, fractured. The one on the right is okay. This one's good. So out of four vents, I only have one that's good. So then I turned to uh, Riggs Vintage Mazda in Canada who came through with another set of vents. Uh, the left is good. Cable housing, beautiful. Now there is a little issue with the right though. So you see how this cable is straight on all these? Straight, 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 straight. Well, on the right side vent, there it's bent. And so, you know, the trick is that when you have this secured in uh, the housing on your dashboard, you know, you can push and pull your cable and it actuates the lever. But on this one, it's bent here. And now that, doesn't that seem like, ah, it's nothing. Well, turns out it is, and it makes it so it doesn't work. So I mentioned that to the guy at Riggs Vintage Mazda, and he went ahead and took care of it by sending another cable. Now these are really difficult to find. I'm probably gonna look into having some made. It's a popular item amongst us Mazda folks. I really appreciate that, uh, he took care of the situation. You know, these are used parts. So I would not have been surprised if he had said, yeah, you know, they're used. What can I do? Sorry, buddy. But no, he came up with a cable and took care of it. So I can say with confidence that Riggs Vintage Mazda is a trusted supplier of stuff. Give him a call, give him an email, let him know what you're looking for. So all of these do have a level of dirt on the inside. You know, the vent is open to the outside of the car. So, yeah, there's dirt in there, front and back. And there's, you know, remnant of the foam that helped seal it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean these up, even the ones that uh, have a broken cable. I'm going to see what I can do to find more cables, maybe even get some made at a bike shop or something. So what I am gonna do is clean all of them up, then I'll lubricate them to make sure all of the components move freely, get them ready to go back in the car. It comes down to cleaning these vents, and let's talk about this little foam strip that's here. When I clean these, I'll be removing that, and so it occurred to me, well, why is it there do I need to make a new foam gasket? What does it do? What happens if I don't do it? So, here's what's going on. When the vent is fully closed, the foam on the back is going to pretty much cushion the breeze coming in from outside of the car. You know, the air is coming from the cowl area, and that's going to soften that noise and any kind of a leak. When the vent is partially open, you know, it's first setting, you've got a 
a hole coming straight through to your passenger or your driver, or depending on what side you're on, and you've got a straight down going towards your feet. Uh, the foam there is really just going to kind of not do much and just, you know, help route air down. When the vent is fully open, so the vent opening that goes towards your feet is obstructed, and the vent opening that goes towards your person is wide open, and the foam will be like right under here and, you know, sealing so that you've got a nice smooth airflow in there. So I think if I don't do anything and don't replace these little foam strips, we're looking at probably noisy vents. You know, it wouldn't be too hard to cut a piece of foam in that shape, and I've got a lot of foam left over from doing the headliner. I'm gonna make a pattern and cut these out of the foam that I have. At the top of the vent, it's a clean fit. At the bottom of the vent, the vent lip tucks underneath a shelf. So I'm going to make a little pattern and cut it slightly larger than the pattern. I have this random soft anti-skid material that I'm going to use just because it's easily bent and shaped. And then I can mark that and then cut it with a scissor. That's what it looks like closed up, and that should quiet up the vent when it's open or closed or halfway. All right, let me make another one. I like it. Okay, there's two of those. Okay, that wasn't too hard, you know, it's just cutting out a pattern. There's no holes, there's no inner opening. Uh, when it comes to making these, that's a whole different story. I've got an inner opening and three holes with notches. So these are the foam gaskets that came off of the vents. So I've got some foam material that I had acquired for a headliner project. Um, looking at it, it's, you know, it might be a tiny bit thicker, but, you know, by the time it gets compressed down, you know, gets compressed down, uh, with the three bolts that hold it on, and it'll be just fine. So for that, we're gonna go see my buddy Corey in Fremont. So my buddy Corey on the Facebook group West Coast Classic Rotaries, he's got a laser cutter. So I'm gonna to get together with Corey and we're gonna go ahead and make some of these gaskets. Yeah, I'm not too sure. You might have to tell me how this corner one orientation. Like these are obviously vertical. Let me go get the bat and we can get a better look. This one's a little torn out. A little bit of coaxing over on this tab, but I think you're going to be right there. Cool. Should do it for you. So what we've done is done some practice ones on cardboard just uh, before we actually burn through our material, which that'll be next. So for the foam material, it's fitting real good. Corey, that's gonna work. I think it will.
So on the weaver with the indent cam, I'm gonna apply some Sil Glide. This is what I used on my window regulators. That's an episode that'll eventually come out here. Usually Sil Glide is clear. This is an old bottle. It's looking brown. It's just fine. It's gonna work. I just wanna cover this little cam here so that things are smooth when this operates. That should work for this big tang that uh, interacts with this cam. Let's just move that around a bit. Okay. It's awesome. The next thing to lube is this spring and this shaft and maybe this spring too. So I'm gonna hit that with something that'll drip down in there and be thin enough to penetrate deep down. And what I have here is... Wilson Combat Ultima Lube 2 Light Oil. Action oil would be just as good. So yeah, this shaft that goes all the way through here, it's gonna make contact here and here. There's really the only way to lube the other side of this uh, flange, of course, is to disassemble. That's a little overkill for my little project here. Let's just get it inside this little shaft here. Gonna give it plenty of opportunity to penetrate. And this is a thin, light oil. Let's give that a little bit of a working. Maybe a little bit on this shaft here. What do you think? Why not? Fabulous. Those work great now. Okay, now I want to apply adhesive to the little foamies. Apply one to three even coats. All right, do that. All right, one more. On this edge, needs it. Allow adhesive to dry until tacky. So it has started to become tacky. I'm trying to do a little finesse here so we don't make a mess. Avoid the mess, use finesse. Holy shit. The poet and don't know it. Too bad or I'd show it. I am applying pressure to any of these raised surfaces, particularly these ribs here. So installing the vents, um, I've come up with the original hardware for that. Um, if you take a look at where they mount, you can see that the plastic flange that holds them on shows the imprint of a large flat washer, no lock washers, and that makes sense. You just want a nice big, large flat washer so that nothing cracks this plastic vent housing. So I've found those original bolts. Got them all ready to go. They had been to the platers, so they're pretty. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit these with the uh, spray adhesive. Very lightly though. Like, I just put a thick coat on these. I just need these to stay long enough for me to manipulate these vents into place. So I'm going to put a light tack on each side. going real light because I, I just need it to stay while I'm manipulating the vent into position. This isn't a stay forever situation. That's all I need.
All right, let's get them put on the car. So what I'm gonna do is take the two rubber gaskets, place them into the firewall, they'll stay put, and then I'll mate the vents up to them. So the original gasket that came on here was like a foamy thing with a really thin paper lining. And getting that off the rubber has proven to be a little bit of a challenge. I've used various cleaners, gotten most of it off. The most successful was probably the grease and wax remover here. Um, you know, this is rubber. I've got powerful strippers that'll take this off. You know, there's a POR15 product that'll It'll clean this off, but it'll also start digesting this rubber duct, right? That would be collateral damage. So, not going to do it. And this isn't a big deal. So between the piece of rubber and the foam that's going to formulate the new gasket, and the spray adhesive that I'm going to use to keep it in place, I'm confident we're going to have a good seal. I want to point out that on the back here, or actually that's the front, the front side has no gasket at all, and that is going to meet up with the actual firewall of the car. So let's get a close look at that. Raised area points out towards the outside of the car. So this is the side with the foam gasket that'll go against the vent, and up against the firewall, uh, it's just this rubber duct up against the metal. All right, so the black gasket with its conical shape goes straight up against the firewall. And it's essentially going to just, you know, funnel the air in. Keeping in mind that one gasket is sponge, the other gasket is rubber. I'm just kind of hand tightening these. Yeah, I wouldn't even say tight, I'm just saying, you know, firm. The final piece to go on is the duct that goes between this square piece here and the dashboard. So uh, I'm going to put those on. They're a little misshapen because they were sitting in a bin, you know, with other parts on top of them. And the best way to fix that is to get them put where they go and they'll just kind of reshape themselves. So I'm gonna put those on. So there's square edges on the bottom, round edge at the top. And so that kind of tells me which way this goes. Square edges go on the bottom, round on top. And this is the right side. There is an L and an R on each rubber piece. Simplifying that. Okay, square cut at the bottom. Matches up with the bent. It's gonna set like that. And the little diffuser that fits into the dashboard, that's gonna go right there. And that's another episode. We'll take care of that when we put the instruments back in and the dashboard back together. Coming up next. I used to see crash pads for most of our sleeves for sale 15 years ago. Maybe get something custom made.